A data connection is a powerful and commonly used tool in AWARE. It is a live, dynamic linkage between a map layer in AWARE and an external table of data. This allows you to display and visualize your tabular data in the form of a map. The data table can be in one of several different formats, including Microsoft Excel, DBF, CSV, or it can also be a table or a query within a relational database such as Microsoft Access, SQL Server, or Oracle. The structure and organization of the data table is specific yet simple, as will be demonstrated in this video. Let's take a look at a visual illustration of what a data connection is. To begin with, you'll need to already have an existing map layer in AWARE displaying the geographic features for which you have data. These are typically either a point map layer or a polygon map layer such as this one showing the U.S. state boundaries. Note that these states are being labeled here only for the purpose of demonstration. You do not need to have your map labeled like this in order to perform a data connection. Next, the other critical piece is your table of data. Regardless of how much or how little data you have in your table, the one critical component it must contain is a field that links each row of data in the table to one, and only one, geographic feature on the map. You can see in this example that each row is uniquely matched up with a particular state on the map, and there are no duplicate states in the table. Now the instructions for how to establish a data connection will be covered in a few minutes. And with the data connection established, the data from the table is now associated with its corresponding map feature on the map. With that association established, AWARE can now utilize those connected data values to render or display the map features accordingly. Some examples would be to fill in each map feature along a given color ramp according to the numeric value, or to plot circles on the map feature, each circle sized according to the connected value, or even just label the map features with their actual values from the table. These are just a few examples of how the data can be visualized. Let's take a closer look at the pieces that need to be in place for a data connection in AWARE. I'll perform a data connection of some sample U.S. state level data. Obviously one thing I'll need is a U.S. state map layer as seen here. On a side note, if you have any questions about or are uncertain about how to get basic boundary map layers into AWARE, you'll want to review the tutorial video entitled What is an AWARE Project? So if we consider this U.S. states map layer, note that each state has these two attributes. As I click around on the map on each state, you can see that the values for each attribute are loaded here. Both of these particular attributes hold values that are unique to each state. In other words, only one state is going to have the two-letter abbreviation TX, and only one state is going to have the name Utah. Without at least one unique identifier value for each feature of a map layer, a data connection cannot happen. In this case, each state happens to have two. Each has a name, and each has a two-letter abbreviation. Now let's look at the table of data that I want to connect to this layer. Notice that this table has one field that identifies each state. Luckily, it is one of the two items used to uniquely identify each map feature in the map layer, the two-letter state abbreviation. If this table had the full state name instead, I could use that also to establish the data connection because the full state names are also present in the map layer. Also note that I have several data fields here. These happen to be data from the USDA showing production statistics for several different types of crops in the U.S. in the year 2008. You can have as many data fields as you like. I just happen to have two. I'll point out a few key items of importance about the way this table is organized. First, know that there is only one instance of each state in this table. AWARE will handle only a one-to-one -one relationship between the map layer and the data table. It will not handle a many-to-one nor a one-to-many relationship. It is okay if some of the states are missing from your table. That will not be a problem. You can see that that is actually the case here because even though Alaska and Hawaii are part of the map layer, there are no records for them in this data table. Also, if there were extra states listed in the table that were not in the map layer, that would be okay too. You simply cannot have a given state represented more than one time in the table. Next, notice that there are some empty cells, and that is okay as well. Also, you should not have any extra data or values entered in the table beyond the XY limits of the table. In other words, don't have any notes or formulas entered into any of the cells out here or down here below the table. Finally, it is best not to have any spaces in the field names. If you need a space, use an underscore instead. 
If you need some more information about how to properly format your table of data, we have a cheat sheet available on the aware.com support pages that cover tips for formatting spreadsheets for use in aware. Now let's perform the data connection. Back in aware, I need to locate the map layer attribute that must be used for this data connection. Remember, the table identifies each state using a two-letter abbreviation, so I must use this attribute to establish the data connection. To initiate the data connection, I'm going to use my secondary mouse button, that's usually your right mouse button, to click on the correct attribute, and from the context menu that appears, go to Connect to My Data, and I'm going to select Excel because my table is in the Excel format. The data connection wizard appears, and this will step me through the process. The first step is to browse to and select the file containing my data table. There it is, so I'll click that, select Open, and Next. In the next step of the wizard, it will list any and all possible worksheets in that selected file. If you have an Excel spreadsheet, for example, that has multiple worksheets in it, they will all be listed here. Select the appropriate one and continue. And you can bypass this next screen that's used only for advanced users. In this next screen, where you see Establish a one-to-one -one relation, you will select from this menu the field in the data table that holds the unique identifier values that match up the table to the map layer. In this case, that would be the state abbreviation field. I'll select that and then click Finish to finalize the establishment of the data connection. When finished, I will now see this red and blue icon below the connected attribute. Initially, it will show the red X here. This indicates that I need to refresh the data connection in order to bring across the data from the table. To do that, I can either right click on the data connection icon and I'll see this menu with the refresh option here. That's one way. Or I can simply click on the plus icon that's right here. So I'm going to do that. When I do that, you can see that the connection is refreshed and then I will see some new attributes listed here below the data connection. You will recognize these as the fields that were present in the data table. If I click on a state on the map, you can see that the information is loaded in parentheses here next to the connected attributes. This is the data coming across from the table. I can now use these values to color in the states on the map to reflect those connected data values. For example, I'll display the wheat production attribute here, and by default it'll be a solid color blue, but I can edit the display properties here and change that to a more visually descriptive map. I won't go through the whole process here, but this is the result. I'll zoom in here to the lower 48 so we can get a closer look. For more about coloring a map layer like this, refer to the tutorial video on editing display properties. Let's review one more key aspect of the data connection. The fact that a data connection is a live, dynamic connection, not just a one-time transfer of data from a table to the map. As long as I keep this data connection established, and as long as I do not either rename the data file or move it from its current location, I can continue to edit the contents of that data file and refresh the map with the newly edited data. Let's see an example. I'm going to go back to the Excel table. I'm going to make some edits to it. I'm going to add another field of data that I've prepared ahead of time. This is some data on soybean production. So I'll paste it into the table. So now I've appended a new field of data to my table, which is currently already connected to the map layer in AWARE. I'll save this, and now I'll go back to AWARE. If I go back to the data connection, I need to refresh this data connection in order to bring in that newly edited table of data. So I have two options for doing that. Remember, I can either right-click and select the Refresh option, or I could collapse and then expand this data connection again using this button. I'm going to go ahead and use the right-click and Refresh and as soon as that refresh has completed, you'll see a new attribute has been listed here at the bottom of the tree view. So that's that new field that I just added to the table, and it's now coming across via that data connection. And as seen before, if I now click around on the map, you can see that the soybean production values are appearing in the AWARE interface. This is a basic overview of a data connection. We will have, over time, more tutorial videos that guide you through the process of establishing data connections to other specific types of map layers such as U.S. zip codes, U.S. counties, and international political boundaries.